Hello, hello, hello. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to our seventh annual Halloween. That amazing time of year when we celebrate horror games by playing nearly 30 of them over the course of seven streams across the week. We are starting really strong this year, I promise you, because I have not been able to tear myself away from Inscription. At first, I played like a couple of minutes just to test it, make sure it's working fine. And then it was so fun that I couldn't stop playing. I couldn't just not finish the run and then I couldn't not then sink six more hours into it uh, so Inscription is a card based roguelite horror game from the creators of Pony Island I've completed two runs at this point uh, and those were the last things I did uh, so let's just start with the map this has um, an extra layer to it, an extra phase compared to like Slay the Spire. It is the map phase where you choose your route, leads up to a boss. Um, it has the actual combat phase we'll see in a little bit. And then we also have this extra layer on top of that of walking around the cabin. These silhouettes represent different uh, animal tribes. All of the creatures in the game are animal-based, loosely. Let's go with the bird. Yeah! <laughs> oh my god, the magpie is so good right off the bat. It's one of my favorites because it has this ability. Hoarder. When a card bearing this sigil is played, you may search your deck for any card and take it into your hand into your hand uh, it lets you tutor cards out whatever you want whenever whatever you need oh magpie is a brilliant pickup and this icon is a sacrificial altar uh where <laughs> this might get better because we can now sacrifice the magpie we just got and what this does is it allows us to transfer its effect onto a different creature. Like our stink bug, who only costs two bones, or our stoat, who costs one blood. We'll get into that in a second. <sighs> who do I want to put this on, though? I think probably the stoat, because if I get this first thing in combat, then I can tutor out whatever I need. I can always just go squirrel that turn one. Uh, this should be like an elite combat encounter, which is kind of funny because we haven't had a normal one yet. And this is how the combat portion of this game works. Uh, you can draw one card per turn, except on turn one, because you start with your opening four. You always start with a squirrel card. It's free. It doesn't have any stats, really, just one. But the whole point of it is to play it on one of the spaces on your side of the board. And then the blood droplets in the upper right corner of your minions indicates uh, the cost in sacrifices. So the wolf requires two sacrifices. The stoat only requires one. So with the squirrel that we open the game with, we can play it. And then also, if we really wanted to, we could then uh, sacrifice the bull, the, uh, the stoat we just played and throw down the bullfrog. But there is no reason to do that. Now, on top of that, there's also... Uh, minions who can be paid for in bones. Those are uh, these tokens down here. Whenever a minion dies, uh, we will get uh, their bones. We will collect their bones. After all this time, we can finally buy their bones. Uh, and once we get another bone, we got one from the squirrel, we can play the stink bug. Something else that I can do, however, is... Uh, you know how you have the potion belt in Slay the Spire? Well, these items over here 
are kind of an analog to that. You can pick them up or generate them sporadically throughout a run. And you can have a maximum of three at a time. In this case, uh, we can generate one extra squirrel to sacrifice and then play this 3-2 wolf. Now that the stoat has done its job. And that also gives us enough bones to play the stink bug. So, oh, I should have, wait, no, the grand fur is there. Uh, that's a stationary, just kind of blocking target, like the stump. In certain battlefields, they, uh, they will just show up in random spots on the field. Uh, and now the interesting thing about combat is, I said you get one draw per turn. Uh, if we hadn't played the, uh, the magpie effect to draw the bullfrog early, we would be able to choose between either drawing it as the last card in the deck, or a squirrel. You always have to make that choice with your one draw. A squirrel, which is a free minion that you use to sacrifice, basically. Or do you go for another minion in your deck? That's kind of the interesting dynamic going on here. Uh, let's see, real quick. We'll just go for the sigils here. Uh, this is Mighty Leap. It blocks flying creatures. Flying works uh, just like it would in magic, I would, I, I guess, where nothing can, can block something with flying unless it has this. And then these, it, this is hefty. At the end of the owner's turn, a card bearing the sigil will move in the direction inscribed in the sigil. Creatures in the way will be pushed in the same direction. Since these two are going to push each other, I don't think either of them will move, but uh, my bullfrog is about to take this out. This will attack the stump on his turn, and then... Oh, and also, like, uh, like Slay the Spire or Darkest Dungeon, this up here is what your opponent is going to be playing next. And so we're going to end our turn. We do one damage... Uh, and that was enough to beat him. The goal uh, for each combat is not to do a specific n amount of damage. It's to win kind of a tug of war. Uh, the, the scale starts off balanced at zero. You can take five damage from there uh, before you lose, and your opponent can take five damage before they lose. But the thing is, if you're trading damage back and forth, you're kind of you're you're aiming at a moving target. If you have uh oh ho, 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 ho. good. The alpha costs five bones, but it gives adjacent creatures an extra attack power. And I lost my train of thought. It, it it's just a tug of war. Now campfires you will usually be able to give a creature either plus two health or plus one attack multiple times the crackling fire lit the starving faces of a group of survivors and this also gives me a chance to slow down a little and we can get a feel for the ambience of this game because that's also a really engrossing part of it We have not food, one said. But perhaps one of your creatures will join us. Enhance its health, said another. <laughs> Choose wisely. Stop this, says the stoat. give the bullfrog extra health. Now it's a 1-4. Keep it right there, said one survivor. The creature could become more powerful, but the survivors looked hungrier by the second. Push our luck or pull away? I'm going to leave this one up to chat. <clears throat> Whoops. Q. 
Can I start a gamble? No. Push, pull away. Uh, Min Carousel says, The balancing mechanic sounds like you'd want to do as much damage as fast as possible, not letting the opponent get going. But I don't know how feasible that is. If you can pull it off, that's absolutely a way to go. You can, you can absolutely put together turn one kills, no problem. Um, you just have to draw for it. Give in. Do it. Okay, we're doing it. One six. You were feeling lucky. Perhaps you could chance another moment. Can we chance another moment? You notice the survivor gripping their spear with a disturbing intensity. Push your luck further or run back. What do we think? See, back, back, pull back, 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 push, run. <laughs> uh, I have gotten one up to a 110 once. But then again, I also lost a really valuable card in my last run, uh, pushing it just one time. So we're going to retreat. The survivors were right about the flames. They had enhanced the creature's health. Spotting a few of the survivors drooling, you made a hasty retreat with your bullfrog. That's not bad. That's a 1-6 taunt, basically. Uh, that will block anything in its way. Uh, the way this works is that if there is a creature opposite you, then when you end your turn, you attack it. If you have flying, you will go right over it and, tack and, and attack the health total directly. <laughs> attack your life points directly um, and then if uh, something has mighty leap or uh, I forget what the non-flying version of the taunt is called then you will uh, oh wait no no the, not the non-taunt uh, if you have mighty leap then that will block the flying creature now let's play with this uh, enhanced deck we can see that next turn he is going to play a wolf cub on this spot. A wolf cub is a 1-1 one, one that will eventually grow into uh, a normal wolf, a 3-2. But he'll be able to play that for free. And we'll get around to what these implements are uh, when they're more relevant. I think I have to just start with the stoat. It's fine to put that here, because it'll take one damage and then deal one back. It's going to take a while to build the bones up for this bad boy, but we will get there. So you see, it's one tooth. We did one tooth worth of damage. Uh, and if we do four more without taking any, then that's the scale fully tipped. So now do we want to draw, what was the last thing, the stink bug? Yeah, the stink bug. Or do we want to draw a squirrel so we can sacrifice something uh, uh, in addition to the stow to play the wolf? We're going to draw a squirrel. We'll put the wolf here. It'll kill the cub. And then this will come down, it'll have nothing to buff, it'll just do one damage, and that's totally fine. It'll even the scale out, but then we'll have three damage on board, locked and loaded, and he'll have one. And now it's... Mm, nah, that was probably a squirrel turn, actually. Oh well. Uh, let's see. We can always just do this still. That's going to allow the wolf cub to kill the wolf, though. Ah, that's a problem. Hmm. Oh, well, I'll just take it. We're still going to deal three. Uh, the effect of the stink bug, by the way, that's this sigil, stinky. The creature opposing a, uh, a card bearing this sigil loses one power. That's why the wolf cub is a zero one right now. Another squirrel. 
Let's see. What is the best way to go about this? Probably want to deal with the cub. So I'm going to sacrifice this, get the bullfrog going. Do I have enough bones? I do not. These two creatures have to die or another couple squirrels. But he has no more minions coming, so we will win anyway. Bump, bump. And now, is this the traitor? I don't think we've even gotten a chance to go to the trapper yet. Or is this just a random event? Uh, let's check. Oh, yeah, it was the traitor. This is profoundly disappointing. Uh, so, if you come to the trader with no pelts, because you haven't visited the trapper yet, then you will just get some extra teeth. And the other way that you get teeth is actually by overkilling your opponent. Uh, like, you only need to go from zero to five to win, so every point of damage over that represents an extra tooth that you're going to get. <laughs> Which part of that don't you like, Snack? You don't like the teeth? You don't like trading teeth? What do you think the pliers are for? <laughs> There's a skull in this house that spontaneously grows teeth you can harvest. Really? I didn't know that. Yeah, we're going to get into that layer of things in a second, too. God, I like this game. It's a very good way to start uh, Halloween. Okay, what do we want to sacrifice? Definitely not our 1-6. Um, I, I don't like sacrificing the stink bug because it's so cheap. So the alpha is a natural choice. And I think you could make a good argument for for putting it on the bullfrog because the bullfrog will retain that effect so well being so tanky. It's a very sticky minion. So I'm very likely to get value out of that. Alright, so we can get that down on turn one as well. He's going to play a wolf cub. I'm going to use the rest of my items on this fight. Because I'm pretty sure there's a pack just up ahead. Uh, and again, you cannot have more than three items. So if you don't use them while you have them, uh, you're not getting like the efficiency. Yeah, definitely want to do this. Then I can play things in the adjacent tiles and I will be good. We take that. We're good. And then... Get this. We're going to use the hook. And now, this is our wolf cub. <laughs> also, hey, snack. Let's tip those scales. Oh, no! Uh, so we are plus one on the scale. And we will go up an extra three... And then this will turn into a regular wolf. We'll be good. Should get some overkill out of this one. So now that's a 4-2. Get another squirrel. Squirrel. Double sacrifice. And that's another 4-2 wolf. So we are going to do 8 damage. When I think we... What did I say? We only need one? Yeah. Lots of teeth. Lots of teeth. Many teeth. I feel like I'm cleaning out the glove compartment of my dad's pickup truck all over again. Oh, God. <laughs> I made myself double over. No. All right. Let's uh, take a step back and explore the house. The way you move around the house is it's a grid. And you can turn 90 degrees and walk a tile forward as long as there is space. Got some mushrooms, a hammer that I don't know how to use or unlock yet, uh, and a book that I've already mined. 
Uh, this book will give you some tutorial stuff. Whoops. Some tutorial stuff, but also it had a combination on here that I used to unlock. Where was it? Is this the safe? I think so. Who is... What the fuck is that? Okay. I've never really looked at this either. Uh, these are some of the figurines from the campfire. Is there anything else in here? I don't know what that card was. And I still don't know what the deal with this board is. Uh, but there's a wolf cub and a squirrel on it. And then door is locked. And these are my two wins. Pibby and Pibby. <laughs> the first time I won, he said to take a look at them or ha or they had something to say to me and I didn't uh, heed that. Okay. The pain is unbearable. Even after all these years. What do you want? I have very little to live for these days. Ooh. The cage has been broken. The wolf statue is free. Yeah, that's something I did in a previous run. Um, I believe this is a step toward freeing the master. Okay. This is all new to me, by the way. Watching the angler lose. Uh, the angler is the second boss. Now that, so now that soothed my pain. An old rival of mine, that fisherman. He bested me this time, but I will have another chance. I witnessed the final defeat of Leshy over there. Quite a spectacle. Though I had no hope that it would bring me freedom. For that to happen, I think you would need something special up your sleeve. Okie dokie, like a knife? What if I just put a knife up my sleeve when I beat the game? <laughs> okay. That's all we're getting out of the slime in the jar for now. And then I solved two of these before. Uh, they're a little puzzle where you just have to uh, line this up like a board on the game. So this is my side. This is theirs. You want to get it up to five damage. Let me take a shot at this one. Uh, the thing about the ants is that they do plus one damage for every other ant on the board. So in this case, it would be three, six, nine damage because all three are uh, available. Plus the two from this. Except this ant and this ant are blocked by two geckos. So really, it's only four damage that gets through like this. Wait, what? 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 Did I just miscount that completely? Yeah, I miscounted that badly. I even said the ants are three damage. <laughs> Never do math on stream. Never. Never do it. Never ever do it. It can only embarrass you. Damn it. Shitting. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> okay so this is a really cool effect this doesn't deal damage to whatever's in front of it instead it deals damage to the tile to the right and to the left so we're gonna get one damage this way because it's unblocked the gecko or the yeah the the gecko blocks this um we can't wait no i can move it can I move this back? No, that's stuck in place. How to make this work? Which one of these can be moved back? Any of them? Uh, can I move this down? Good. That gives us still only two. Can I move this down? No. What about... Can't move that... Can I do this? What am I missing here? Doing one, one. 
three. Why am I only getting... Am I taking damage somewhere? That should be three, four, five, six, seven. Unless I don't understand this. Geckos are known for their blocking. Yeah, but in the adjacent tile, should that work? If so, how do I go about this? Can I take the gecko? I can't do anything with the gecko. Unless the trick has to be something like this, like blocking the tile. So we'll go up there. This doesn't seem like it'll do it. Hmm. I don't know what this one is. Don't hit the gecko. Oh, wait, that would be this, this one. Ah, I can't avoid that. Can't escape from crossing fate. Okay, we're gonna put that one down for a little bit and explore the rest of the house. I don't want to get too bogged down in that. That will come later. Oh, this must be what uh, I saw someone talking about, where you can harvest tea. Huh. I don't know what the deal with this is. Does something happen when I win my third run? And then I also don't know what to wind the clock to. Yeah, there are still uh, quite a few mysteries left in the house for me. Now we're going to choose a tribe. We have another campfire coming up. And then our first boss. Bird! Wait, which tribe is this? Is this snakes? It's got to be snakes. Uh, elks are usually pretty... Yeah! The black goat. The black goat is zero one one that costs one. But when you sacrifice it, instead of being worth one sacrifice, it's worth three. I love the black goat. You have to solve the escape room puzzle to progress any further. Oh, okay. Uh, I think you have most of the components. I just have to figure out how to solve that one puzzle. I'll do that on my own time. This will be for plus one power. <laughs> nope, 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 nope. The stoat knows what's up. It knows it's risky. Yeah, some of the cards are actually characters who talk to you. Uh, the stoat and the stink bug being two of them. The wolf cub that we freed was another. Who do I want to... I'm going to go with the wolf. I'm going to just push it twice and see. You considered leaving the creature by the fire for another moment. This would be risky. Oh, they killed him. Feeding time, screamed one survivor, leaping upon the wolf. Their spears promptly eviscerated the beast. You snuck away amid the sickening sounds gnashing and... Uh, the sickening sounds gnashing and howling. I think that should be of? The bones are yours. So, it's not all bad. There's a silver lining. We got the wolf's bones! Hello, Ruddy. How are you doing? Can I give you a hint with the escape room? Yeah, sure. Why not? Stowe doesn't want anything to do with this shit. <laughs> the wolf's bones. Yeah, we just got him uh, in a jar. And we did not actually replenish uh, our supplies. We actually didn't have a pack. So we're going into the first boss with uh, just some bones. Bosses work a little bit differently. Normally, you get two chances uh, per, per stage. Those are what the two candle flames are for. That doesn't apply to bosses. You only get the one. But if you come into the fight with both lives, then when then he'll extinguish one of them and give you this card, the smoke. 
He, on the other hand, does get two lives, so that it's a two-phase fight. You pass a massive, empty bowl, surrounded by heaps of unidentifiable, unidentifiable giblets and scantlings. It seemed the bowl was designed for a dog. But what earthly hound would require a meal of that size? I love this theme. So our first boss is the Prospector. Just pop that mule. Yeah, he shows up to give us a hint. And the mule is this pack mule. Once we kill it, uh, we'll get a bunch of cards to play. So let's start off. We can start off playing most of this, actually. Uh, we're going to play this. We're going to... No, that's really wasteful. We don't want to sack the black goat yet. Uh, so we'll just start off with the stoat. Actually, this will work out just fine. Because we'll tutor out the bullfrog. Uh, then we can play the smoke. Sacrifice the smoke for the bullfrog. The bullfrog does one damage plus buffs the stoat to a 2-3. We have enough bones to play the stink bug, which will be a 2-2. And we end phase one immediately. Now there is a downside to this plan. One which, um, actually now that I'm thinking about it, uh-oh, this isn't good. I thought I had one more card, um, but I can tell you right now, we did just lose this. We 100% just lost. Yep. Uh-huh. We have nothing but squirrels left. And this black goat. Cool, we have a black goat. It doesn't do damage. We lost. Damn it. I did a whoopsie. Ah. Yep, let's draw a squirrel. I mean, we could delay this for a little while, but it wouldn't matter. Aw, oh, shit. Uh, and I knew it was coming, too, because he always does that board wipe going into his second phase. <laughs> hurry up, hurry up, kill me. Kill me and we'll get another run in. More gold for me. I had a lot of teeth I lost too. Damn it. I I I uh I tended I, I harvested my teeth garden. I love this. Uh these carry over between runs and you get to assemble them from your deck that you failed with. Your death card. Beautiful. Though it could use some detail. Choose a card to draw the cost from. Okay. So, it's going to cost one blood. Why am I only getting one option? Okay, so it's a, a one mana one, a uh, zero one, I mean. Sad boy. It's going to be a sad boy. Does this one even get a sigil? Oh my god. This is the worst death card I've ever made. doesn't even get a sigil. I hope I never, ever, ever get that. That's the that's the worst one I've made. And I made a, a worse version of the pack mule once. Instead of being a 2-2 uh, with that sigil for 2-blood, it's a 2-blood 1-2. On the other hand, I also have, like, a free 7-7 somewhere wandering around, 
with some insane, uh, I think it's the Ouroboros sigil that sends it back to your hand when it dies. So, nothing comes between that man and his gold. Your deck. So pretty much the same thing, including our starting items. Hey, speaking of which, there it is. Worst pack rat. <laughs> oh, I knew worst pack rat was going to make a, 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 an appearance tonight. Oh, wow. This is great. Uh, we're going to pick the ant queen. <laughs> Good lord. And then we're going to go here because uh, we got burned on the campfire before. Came to the woodcarver. After an overlong moment of silence, she moved to offer her carvings. Okay, we got an ant head, a body that gives us airborne, and a snake head. I want the ant head. The ant head's really useful, but it doesn't pay off yet. You need to find the woodcarver twice for a payoff. All right, first combat. We are going to start this off right with two sacrifices. A wolf, two bones, gives us the stink bug, and four damage, putting us on match point. not do anything fancy. Let's just end it and get our two damage overkill, our two teeth. And there's the woodcarver again, so we're going to take that left path, which gets us a mystery card. Kaminsky! Some death card. And a magpie. I always like a magpie. And every time I come across that creature, I can't help but think of uh, one of my favorite Aesop rock, uh, rock songs. Blah, blah, blah. What do we got? Oh. Uh. Eh. Eh. This is okay. So now, all of our uh, uh, insect cards will have this sigil. Waterboard. A card bearing the sigil submerges itself during its opponent's turn. While submerged, opposing creatures attack its owner directly, so they can't be targeted. Yeah, we're going to take that. That's all right. That's not a bad one. And then we are going to go into a fight in which they have their own statue. Oh, and they also have Waterborne, so we're not going to be able to deal with their shit unless we have Taunt. Hmm. We can't win on turn one on this. That's going to attack two at once, which is annoying, but manageable. Locked. It'll move over, so that's not the biggest deal, actually. And then we'll throw the wolf down here. And also, we'll use uh, this while we can. That only gets us to four, but that's still good enough. I could also use the hook right away, just to end this nice and quick. Yeah, let's just not take any chances. We can get a refill before the first boss. And which one is this again? Is this sacrifice a card? Oh, this is, uh, we get to choose a death card. Hell yeah. Forgot about this. Reginald and Barbecue Man and Casey. 
Casey's a good one. Damn, I always like this effect. Plus, it's only one mana. Sorry, barbecue man. I think everything ganks owls. <laughs> Rock says, oh, barbecue man is me. <laughs> you came upon the woodcarver. Fixed her intense gaze upon you. Now we can pick a new body or a new head. Uh, so... Ooh, 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 ooh. These are both really good. Uh, this is Corpse Eater, which is a sick name. Uh, if a creature that you own perishes by combat, a card bearing this sigil in your hand is automatically played in its place. So just some automatic refill. And you've seen that there is sometimes an issue getting cards out of your hand because you have to choose between drawing cards to play and the squirrels that you usually need to use to play them. This, on the other hand, is unkillable. When a card bearing the si this sigil perishes, a copy of it is created in your hand. Hell yes, we are taking this. And we're putting the ant head on it. So we have an ant. We picked a... Uh... Wait. Wait. Is the ant queen this run? You hunched down to place her offering in your pack. When you looked up again, the ancient woman had vanished. Let's check something real quick. Yes, it is good. Good, 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 good. Good, 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 good. That's... Oh, yeah, the stink bug counts. I always forget that. That's why the ant body is so good. All right, cool. Now we can visit the trapper after this fight. Hopefully, we'll get some overkill in. Yeah. So that's what this does. When you assemble this, it grants any cards of the tribe that's on the head. So in this case, insects the sigil on the body so our stink bug is now unkillable i mean it can die in combat we but we can always pay two bones to replay it so we will not have that problem we had last time where we run out of things to play good 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 we're gonna take two damage i mean net one net negative one but yeah it's still not bad now let's get the wolf down. And the question is, do we want to attack one of the sparrows and get it off the board? Yes, we do. And then we'll turn the other one into a zero two, a zero one now. Uh, and it has a zero three skunk, not doing anything across from, from the grand fur. So we're doing pretty well pretty well. Oh yeah, by the way, you can't sacrifice things like grand furs or boulders if they're on the board. A grand fur does not bleed. Do three more. Take one. So hopefully um God, this is so sick. Okay. This is going to take one more turn. No, I no, it's not. I can't count. But I didn't get the overkill that I wanted, so how many pelts can I afford? You always get one for free. And then the more it costs, the higher quality it is. And we can't afford a golden one unless... Oh, no, we can't exit to the cabin to check the teeth garden. So I'm just going to take the one pelt. The uh, the thing that you have to watch out for with pelts in your deck is they do clog it up. You can draw them off the top, and it's essentially a dead draw. Okay, so the ant queen will spawn an ant. An ant which is going to be infinitely replayable, by the way. Huh. We could put that on something that costs way less. In fact, I think I'm going to do that. Is there a reason not to? 
or do I want to put something on it? No. I'm going to put that effect on the stink bug. So we can have an infinite chain of ant generation. And then just flood the board with ants at some point. We're going ant strategying. <laughs> we ain't got no boneless trees down in Alabama, says Snack. Alright, so we made it here with both candles lit so we get the smoke when he extinguishes it. Let's go. Stink bug, turn one. Yeah, this is what I mean. You can just draw them, and there are zero ones, which doesn't do us any good. However, uh oh, what's this? We get the bullfrog in play, and we can get the stink bug down now. Because that generated so many bones. Smoke is worth a lot of bones. Smoke is worth uh, four bones. This generates us a worker ant, which is itself unkillable. Uh, and then we want to sacrifice the bullfrog for this play. No, we don't have to. Squirrel. All right, cool. Oh my god, wait a minute. Okay, I got scared for a second that I was going too all in again. <laughs> But, like, that's just not even an issue this time. I do want to make sure that I kill the pack mule this time. Uh, that was one mistake that I made before. Won't have that issue again, though. I hope. I might, actually. Damn. Still not enough. Do I have uh, an alpha? No. Oh well, let's. Oh, you also can't sacrifice pelts because they also don't bleed. Is this only from combat? Let me make sure. It's any time it, it perishes, so it should go back to my hand immediately. At? It's always our. Oh, wait. Uh, this ant's gonna tip it over before that thing dies. That's a problem. Either way, I can generate another ant. And we love to do that. This, at least, isn't a disaster like it was before. This is just I, a, a slight mistake that makes this marginally more sketchy. <laughs> It's not bad, though. Let's draw a squirrel. Uh, because gold nuggets replace everything that he destroys, we don't really have a turn, but everything that he can play is blocked until he takes those down. Now let's get this other squirrel in play. Let's... Whoops. Let's get some ants on the board. Squirrel there. Another worker ant. That makes them each worth two. If we had another space, we could generate a third ant. But, alas. This just does not matter that it keeps dying. We get another squirrel. We play another ant. We're about to pop a pack mule. We're fine. This is just... It, it's just slowing things down. Oh, we got another ant queen! And another bug. And the cockroaches come with that sigil by default. They are unkillable by default. Uh, but no. We're gonna play an ant. We're going to play the queen of all the ants. Sacrifice an ant that we immediately get back. We go infinite with ants. And now all the ants are three. Which means we kill this with overkill. Boop, boop, boop. I love ant strategies. 
Ants are so fun in this game. Up the ante, baby. Yeah, Snack. Now you're thinking with puns. Rai says, Barbecue Man is like Oven Man from RE4. <laughs> you're right. Uh, and then once you beat a boss, he will uh, relight your missing candle. And give you a reward. A very rare card. Child 13, who can be sacrificed an infinite number of times. Orioli, which costs four, but it's a 7-7. Seven, seven. And the Mole Man, a 0-6 that will leap into any empty space. And block. Mole Man's kind of okay. And I don't have any black goats, which means... Or Yuli is a real risk. Now nah, I'm going with the Mole Man. Because I I think it fits with the strategy of just stalling until I can get a bunch of ants online. Alright, let's proceed into Act 2. The dank smell of tepid water invaded your nostrils. You had reached the wetlands. And we can fill up on items here too. Another ant queen and another cockroach. Oh, wait, the cockroach that we got wasn't permanent. And a ringworm, which I guess that just benefits from uh, the sigil because it's an insect type, but we don't need it. I'm really thinking about this cockroach. Really thinking about it. Now, nah, let's go with the ant queen. We can always do something with that. Let's refill. And then go into this fight. Infinite children ripe for the slaughter, Dr. Rosen says. Okay, this will make him pass his turn one time. Really useful. Uh, we already know how much I like squirrel in the bottle. And a black goat. Okay, we're good. We are so good. Oh, all of their minions are fledglings, so they'll evolve into something. Uh, what does that mean for me? There's a worker ant and a ringworm. And that's going to evolve, I guess, into a queen? That might be a problem. We don't want that. So let's start off with Wolf. Bum -bum. It's fine. We don't mind that. And then we can get the stink bug going. And it generates an ant. We can't really go any further with this, I don't think, right? Because we won't have enough bones. So we can just do our four um, and be more or less fine. Yeah. We're in no real rush. Well, now we're fine. Sacrifice squirrel here just in case. Again, another ant. And then... We could also sacrifice the stink bug to put the molemen down. And that will also let us replay the stink bug to generate an ant to do even more damage and get the stink bug back and buff our ants up. That was a fun turn. And I think that's just a win, too. <laughs> Stonks bug. <laughs> oh, man, that's good, Ro. I already love this weird recursive card advantage deck you've made. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really... it's The deck building in this is such a treat. There's not a lot of card draw, so you really need to be efficient with your cards. Like, you always need to take your, your hand space and your, your... Not your hand space, your hand advantage into account. I 
about that one. Holy shit. Oh, man. These are good. This is a four bone seven seven that's endlessly sacrificable. Uh, and this is a free, a free three two that is worth three blood and also builds uh, little blocking tiles, uh, blocking uh, minions in the adjacent tiles. Oh, I don't know. This is a wonderful start to Halloween. Wait, is one of them kin? Oh, no. Why are they named like this? Well, you see, this is a 4-1 that has unkillable, so it's called the Gamebryo Engine. <laughs> it will never die. Uh, I think I'm taking the 3-2 that's free. And then, oh, the mushroom. I don't have anything for it, I don't think. Uh, the mushroom, it, if you have two of the same card in your deck, it sews them together into one card with the same cost and double the stats. We need duplicates, one for each of us. Hmm. You'll take a creature from us, then. So what are we duplicating? Oh, I love the idea of a 6-4. Or a 0-12! Yeah, we don't mind having two mole men. That is fine. Gamebryo. <laughs> yeah, the engine. <laughs> oh, this is nasty. Two ants are going to come down in the same turn. I guess... They are about to learn about fucking Mole Man. He's a whole mole, man. I mean, this doesn't do me that much good, to be fair. It just buys me a turn. My options are still incredibly incre- Oh, hey. Uh, that's... Okay, yeah. I think I need to play this now. And then also... Just gotta put something in the way this turn. Can't draw blood from a pelt. Because I'm gonna take three no matter what. Oh, no, 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 because the mole man. Silly me. But please. Oh, yes, yes, yes! Okay. We can still make this work, actually. Um, We're doing it? I think we're doing it. I think we're doing it. It appears that we're doing it. That'll kill the ant behind it because there's overkill damage. Just a little quirk of the mechanics. Okay, this is fine. This is going to attack a dam. I'm going to kill a ringworm and another ant that's coming in. If I can stabilize, I will be really, really happy. Stink bug! There we go. That's what I needed. Get us a damn ant in here. Oh, hell yes. Get the stink bug back. We get to do it all over again. Another worker ant. Sacrifice the stink bug. We get two two twos on board. Uh, we will kill off this ant. This ant will go down to a one two. This ringworm will, will die. This worker ant will die. I love it. This worked out fucking great. Bump, bump. Totally fine. Absolutely 100% fine with this. Uh, this is gone according to plan. <laughs> Ostensibly. Allegedly. <laughs> Allegedly, this was the plan. Uh, we're good, though. We are good. We are good. We are good. Bum, 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 bum. Quite happy with that. Oh my god, that's gonna be a lot of overkill. Uh, we're gonna sacrifice Dave even. Actually, can I? Is there a way to actually do this? Uh, the Ant Queen and... Oh, it's just one. It's one blood. It's but a single blood, so that's 4, 8, 12, 16. And I think 15 of that's overkill. No, 14. <laughs> Many teeth. 
many, many teeth. All of the teeth are ours. I know it's 901. We're gonna do the second boss and then uh, switch. Show me the exquisite pelts. I only had, I only had the one. Oh, that's still. We can trade for any of these, and it's gonna be the mantis a hundred times out of a hundred. Because the mantis. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's time to do it. It's time for a zero twelve. Time for that zero twelve. You should, uh, you don't want to see this. Yeah! <laughs> oh, that's so funny. What a strong lad who totally saved my bacon last time. We got David. Wait, do, is this just... Oh, this is turn one win. This is a very easy turn one win. Uh, we do three damage. Oh, I thought I fucked up for a second. Okay, now. As long as we can put the mantis here, that's five damage. Cool turn one. And then we can visit the trapper again. Oh, yeah. And this is going to add one pelt by default, and then we can buy a lot of golden pelts if we want it. I'm going to settle for two. Because that's a lot of cards to add to the deck. That's three cards in a deck of, what do we have, ten? Ten or so? Eleven, maybe? It's a significant number of dead draws going into a boss fight. Uh, and we're about to thin the deck of minions. <laughs> the Mantis is such a good sacrifice, especially when I have a free three damage card. So at any given point, if I top deck this and there's nothing in the way, I win immediately. Or at the very least, against a boss, I blow the candle out immediately. The mud tugged hard at your feet, forcing you to slow your pace. A rank odor caused your stomach to churn and your eyes to water. It was the rotting fish that hung from the branches around you. A huge man approached. I am the angler. You are the fish. We still have two items going into this, too. Uh, we drew a golden pelt. That's one out of the way, I guess. And we get turn one win. We super cannot. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Aspetta uno momento. Guess where we're going? Uh, we're going infinite. Except I should have sacrificed this. Uh, this is actually not a bad thing, though. Because when we transition him into phase two, he's going to spawn chum buckets. And when those chum buckets are killed... Uh, he's going to spawn them across from every minion that we have. When they're killed, they turn into a big shark. That's going to be a problem. So ideally, we want as little on the board as possible if, uh, as we go into that second phase. And uh, we have Dave in the deck <laughs> with uh, the three damage that does uh, damage to adjacent tiles. It's really useful to have something like that against this boss. Now, he's going to take the stoat, and I don't think I mind that. Because I'm just going to do this. And then here we go. Uh, how do I want to go about this, though? Yeah, let's let him kill the magpie. 
Dave isn't even on board yet. So we can place him in this spot eventually. Alternatively, I think I can just win right now through the ants. Because I think I can get them up to three each. I should be able to, right? Yeah. So the ones on the side will win it. Bump, 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 bump. Not bad. Straight to Ant Town. I don't know why, I'm feeling a little bit congested tonight. The douse creates two bells and uh, adjacent to it, and when the bells are attacked, the douse will uh, attack whatever killed them. Which can be pretty... Oh, Mantis God! Mantis God! One one that attacks in front of it and to both adjacent tiles, so it's essentially three damage. We don't even need the item refill either. And now we're on the snow line. All praise the Mantis God. What are we going to pick up here? Oh, I don't really love any of these. Just go for the Hound. We can always uh, sacrifice it for the effect. And now... is No, I want to sacrifice Mantis God. Mantis God. I don't know how this would work if you stack these. Uh, wait. Oh, no, you can't. You can. I forgot Casey also has this. A 0 to 12 multi-attack would be very funny. <laughs> uh, we'll give that to the wolf. Because that's still very, very powerful. And before... Before we can go on with this fight, unfortunately, we are out of time for the first game of Halloween 7. So where were we at? We had just finished the, the second boss. We're about to have an elite fight. Oh, all of his minions stink. So everything I do is one less attack power, except I win this one immediately. And I'm going to overkill by two even. And I still have a bunch of items. Six, seven. Many, many teeth. I still have a bunch of pelts on me, right? Oh shit, I should have taken this route, but I didn't need the items. I'm gonna get back to the trapper before I uh, hit up the trader. Grizzly for three. Um, I think I'm gonna take the elf, the, the elk fawn. Who's getting sacked? Um, probably the magpie, actually. The magpie is two mana for a 1-1, one, one, uh, and it really is only good for the effect, so... Let's put that down on... the stoat. We are loving that. Very, very good. Oh, this is beautiful. We pretty much now auto win whenever we get the stoat on turn one. Because that lets us tutor out David, who is going to just fuck things up. And once again, two points of overkill. 
we got a real broken card. <laughs> and then we have the backup win condition of the ants. So we have multiple ways to just pop off now. Yeah, I'll fatten the deck with another couple of golden pelts. Why not? I don't know if there are any alternate uses for teeth. Don't want to ruin anything with the campfire, so we'll do another sacrifice. Okay. You already have Mighty Leap, right? Yes, you do. Could do the Ant Queen on the Bullfrog. Yes. Ant Queen is getting separated and put on... We could actually put this on a pelt. I've never thought about trying that. Interesting. Let's put it on the Mole Man. Why not? Big, big mole man. Okay, so we win this. We win this instantly. Get David out. Tutor him. Boom. We're golden. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. Dr. Rosen pointed out that I did indeed have two goldens. Oh, no, sorry. That was Ruddy Rouge Rogue. Oh, God. Ruddy Rouge Rogue. <laughs> what a name. Okay, we can get tribal synergy with the ants out of this. If we get them. We didn't hit the ants. Uh, we got a 3-1 Rattler that costs six bones. I don't think we want to visit the woodcarver. I think I'm good with the strategy I have. I don't want to fuck this up. Uh, let's... Let's see. Um, let's go with the squirrel. It's never a bad thing to have. And we get to our third boss. We got the smoke for it. Yeah, we're definitely going to win this one. The man grimaced and shook his head. He shouldn't have come here. This is the trapper and the traitor. And we can't auto win on turn one with this one, unfortunately. Uh, we can still do something useful. What these leaping traps do is they, uh, when they, when they die, they destroy whatever creature is opposite them. And the strange frogs turn into one when they die. But this shouldn't get triggered. This should kill it without triggering it because David won't be across from him and also will do three damage and also won't kill this to turn it into a trap either. Then we can also get the Mole Man down this turn. Yeah, this is sick. All that does is destroy the dam, which is good for us because it frees up space. And the frog doesn't do enough damage to kill David, so he'll get another attack off. We just need stuff now. And luckily, we have all the stuff we could ever need. We can't sacrifice that, though. <laughs> we can't sacrifice the dam. I think if I make him skip the t this turn, what will happen? I, I don't think I just get to auto win because I think something will automatically go in its place, but... OK, 
Okay, so you're gonna do this. Ah, oh, it's the end of my turn. And then do you still get your phase? Yeah, okay, we still do the phase two thing. Let's trade. So you see that we have all these pelts. I hope you brought pelts because these creatures are prepared to rip your throat out. Trade for what you can, but know this, the rest will stay and fight for me. Floods the board with stuff, and then you have to trade your pelts off to take them for yourself. Uh, we want to get rid of this shark. That sucks. Don't love that. Don't love this snake, to be honest. Don't love the grizzly. Don't love the vulture. So we just leave four minions. And this is totally fine. Because David is still is not off the board. We could sacrifice them to get a bear or a great white down too. <laughs> but that's not necessary. Ah, here we go. Now the now he has to pass his turn. So we just win right here on the spot. Um is there anything else we can do to add a little bit of overkill? Yeah. Well, maybe not, actually. How many bones could I get up to? Ah, it doesn't matter. <laughs> I don't need that much overkill anyway. Yeah, this is one of my favorite themes. This and the final boss theme that we're going to hear in a little bit. Yeah, Devour was not... Uh, I was not feeling it. So we went back to Inscription. That's what happened. Perhaps one of these will entice you. We got a long elk, a strange larva, and a gek. Uh, I love geks. Geks are one ones that are free. You glimpsed what appeared to be the light of candles in the distance. A moment. So, leading up to the final boss, you get a very truncated map. We could go trade some pelts. Do I have any left? Yeah, I have quite a few left. Could get an item refill, which... Mm, yeah, I'm gonna go trade these pelts off. Get pronghorn, which is pretty useful. Corpse maggots, I always like. Hmm. A warren can be pretty useful. Let's get the corpse maggots and the warren. And then for the golden pelts. Oh, I'm at four cards here. Okay. Oh, I'm going to get all of them. I don't necessarily love that. That really, really fattens my deck up. But... The deck was going to be fat anyway, except now in, if I draw one of those, I'm not dead drawing a Pell. I'm drawing something that I can at least use. Uh, the warm light of the cabin cut through the thick fog. Surely your tribulations ended here. We get one more thing before the final boss. Good luck. So, he's going to deal us three cards. Each card is going to contain a challenge. The Trial of Skins. 
the three drawn cards must include a pelt. The Trial of the Swift. The three drawn cards must include a card with a sprinter sigil. The Trial of Rarity. The three drawn cards must include a rare. We just picked up four, plus we had, I think, two others. So we're very likely to pass this. And if we pass, we get something really, really useful. Like game-winning useful. There it is. Ouroboros is a rare card. You can tell by the um, the uh, the frame. It's a little more thorny and wiry. So now we get to pick a boon. The boon of the Bone Lord. You will start a battle with eight bones. The boon of goat's blood. You will start a battle with a black goat on the board. The boon of the forest. You will start a battle with grand furs on all of your spaces. I'm going with the Bone Lord once more. Those aren't even close to his most powerful boons, by the way. There's one called Boon of the Magpie. It's just the magpie effect every time you draw. Instead of drawing a random card off the top of your deck, you pick which card you draw every turn. Uh, and then there's also one that lets you draw two cards per turn. Trial of the Finned. Three drawn cards must include a card with Waterborne. Trial of the Ring. If you have a ring, you pass automatically. I don't know what the deal with this is. Trial of the Winged. Okay. Oh, I don't know off the top of my head how many waterborne and how many flying creatures I have in the deck. Does anyone happen to know? There's a zero zero free uh, card called Ringworm. Oh yeah, I know about that one. The ring is connected to the etching. Wait, the etching. What is the etching? I think you have at least one of it. Oh, ringworm. Wait, does that work? I don't think I have a ringworm anyway. Uh, I'm going to go with waterborne. Come on, please, 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 please. Shit. Not a single card with waterborne. Okay, that makes this upcoming fight much harder. If you get a uh, draw two per turn, it can really trivialize this if you have the right cards. You managed to get a boon. This may be a fair competition. Yeah, so going into this fight with zero boons makes this a, a significantly harder fight. One boon, it's about average. Two boons, you can kind of stomp all over him. You spent enough time walking. Now sit. The end is upon us. Yeah, one more to be safe. There's that theme. He gets an extra candle and he can get the other boss effects depending on what mask he puts on. Let's just start this off simple. The Mole Man is gonna block both of my attacks, but that's okay. And then the dam will block the amalgam that's coming down uh, on their next turn.
Let's also get three damage in with the Rattler. God, this theme rules. Okay, Prospector, what is... Oh, hey, a Mantis God's coming down next. I need to get ready for that. Uh, we have the Dam, which is really good. This will work out just fine. Okay, cool. We can kind of afford to take the turn off and just do this. That ends phase one. After barely enduring the onslaught of rare creatures, you shuddered. For you knew, somehow, that the worst was yet to come. Magnificent death cards. Perhaps you will join them soon. So, this phase, he starts playing death cards that you've made. You know how we've had, how we've made some really, really broken death cards? He has access to every one we've made, including all the bad ones like Barbecue Man and Luis. <laughs> uh, and it looks like we're just going to immediately shut this phase right on down. I would ideally... Uh... I would ideally like to have uh, the stink bug in my hand before I end this phase, but hey, beggars can't be choosers. Phase two's out of the way. God, this David we've gotten is broken, especially since we affixed that multi-strike sigil to him. However, Leshy still has a trick up his sleeve. Will you dare attack the moon? There's that stink bug. That's a game winning card. Let's take a look at the moon. The moon is four tiles wide. It is a 140 creature. It will attack every single tile for one damage per turn, and it cannot be uh, over. It, it cannot be bypassed with a flying creature. But it only does one damage to every tile. As long as you have something, it's not hitting your life points directly. Now here's the thing about that one attack. How the hell am I going to get this down? I mean, I might have to let it attack a turn because <laughs> I can't sacrifice anything. Damn it. Okay. Well, the moon's going to kill off the Rattler. Now we'll win the game. Oh my God, I'm so dumb. Oh, well. Oh, wait. That got bad all of a sudden. I mean, not really bad, but... It's just, it's just gonna take extra time now that I've made the mistake. Because you see, the smelly sigil reduces this to zero attack. Which means we no longer have to worry about defense. We could just go in with the ants now. Oh, we can't get another one down. Oh, well. It requires two blood. I don't feel like it. So we're just gonna have a squirrel on board. It's gonna get sucked up by the moon. And that will place the corpse maggots on board. 
weakening my moon with a foul odor? Absurd. And yet, the game mechanics allow it. He allows it. He is allowing this to happen. This would have gone faster with Dave alive, but you know. Hey, Agak. We have destroyed the moon. Do you have any idea the consequences of destroying an astral body? No, of course not. Finish this. Having bested the cabin's inhabitant, you were invited to sit. The great scribe regaled you with his stories. He told you of a world long past, and of how he had conquered it. Of how pure his true intentions were. How he only wished... Enough. Eat. Eat it. If you do not appreciate it, we can move on. I will not dwell on a rejected gift. Right through here. Stand there. Give that here. It's useless without the film. I do not wish to forget your victory. And so, I would like to prepare a monument to it. Please, inscribe your name. Baby. Stay still. You should be very proud of yourself. The challenger before you defeated me. Now they hang from the door by a nail. What could you hope to accomplish? Your deck. There's Pibby, and then there's Pibby, and then there's Pibby. The three victors. Alright, let's catch up with chat. I want to see how everybody reacted to the moon. This man is a fucking fey lord. Oh, the vibes are immaculate. The vibes, yeah. Not barbecue, man. Rice says, the moon, baby. Sounds like fighting against David is gonna suck. Yeah, we skipped that whole thing. Yeah, everybody losing at the moon! Yeah! Attack and dethrone the moon! Leshy and his magic camera have taken the moon. The whole what? Yeah, stink bug. Rattler dies next turn, so you'll be able to play it then. Yep, 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 yep. You make it entirely useless. Yup. This game, this game's pretty good, huh? Yeah, it is, Rai. It really, really, really is. I kind of love how frantic the camera feels as it spans, as it spans around the board. 
Uh, M versus, he said, the thing. Wait, which thing? So this game has convinced me that I need to look into it and other roguelike deck builders in general. Yes, you do. Uh, I have two for you that are very, very good. Monster Train is one. Slay the Spire is the other. Holy hell, they're good. Leshy sus. Rai says, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. The game is pretty good, right? Okay, yeah. The Pibby Bros. Many Pibbies in chat. Loving that. You said scribe. <laughs> You're only seeing part one of the entire game. Yeah, I know. I know. Okay. Uh, we have 15 minutes, actually, until Doom, so we can actually go and try to solve some things in... Oh, hey, the slime. We could, sol we could solve some things in the cabin. You're wondering about that painting? I've seen stuff come out of it. Oh, wait, what about the buttons? But only if the cards are aligned just right. I didn't know you, you could move them. I don't know what one might be able to do with this. Question for another time, maybe? Oh, the agony. Squirrel. No takey knife yet. Uh, I think I have to do this before anything else. Uh, so how do I do this? Oh! Okay. And I thought I had all the totem heads together. My thanks. The woodcarver will offer this now. Okie dokie. Uh, there was something carved in the table. Really? In which table was that? From whence? Oomst? Oh. That's gotta be something at some point. <laughs> Okay. Oh, wait, can I put this over here? Ah. Okay, knife. You finally pried my special dagger from the paws of that squirrel. Though you may wish that you hadn't. Okay. You're still curious? First step would be getting those cards in your deck. Really? Huh. Okay. Oh yeah, and then there's this. More mushrooms. What was the deal with the knife? Oh, became an item. I'll let you use that, but not now. I've never looked at these from this angle before. That has to be for something. All right, what are we saying? Hey, there it goes. Now you can solve the rest. During the boons on the table near the... During the boons on the table near the bottom of the screen, there was a circle with 11 above it? Uh, you mean before the final boss? Those boons? The knife is good and totally not scary at all. The dagger is interesting. It does some things, says Sky Scream. The one thing you're looking for is the wolf statue. Okay, am I pretty much done here, then? I just have to do... I have to get a squirrel and a coyote together? to do the next part. May that dagger find its mark. He must be brave. Okay, so I'm assuming I don't have what I need for the clock yet. Okay. That's fine. 
Let me find me a coyote. Rattler, cockroach. Cockroaches are always good to find because you can uh, just transfer their sigils. Pack. Ch -ch -ch. Alternatively, if I buff the shit out of it, that could be useful too. I guess the woodcarver would be a good idea since I just got that new one. Come upon the old woodcarver who... Oh, that was a good stretch. Fixed her intense gaze upon you. After an overlong moment of silence, she moved to offer her carvings. Uh, let my mice stink. May the mice stink. Without another word, the woodcarver was gone. I'm looking forward to hearing about you playing this after tonight. <laughs> Me too. God, I wish m there were more card building roguelites. If anybody ever finds a really good one, let me know. This is w this is quickly become, uh, ever since Slate Aspire came out, like one of my favorite genres. I really, really find it engrossing. I love turn-based games, especially like this. God, it's so mechanically interesting. Okay, do I have a hook? Yeah, I'm gonna be stealing me a coyote. Special dagger to the user. You will place a weight on the scales. The pain is temporary. Oakley Doakley. Ah! Oh my eye! Ow, Jesus Christ. And that really does inhibit your vision, huh? Okay, first of all. Oh my god, I can barely see. Shit, shit. You may use... Oh, that's why. I haven't drawn yet. Um... Hey, what? Hold on, what? Hold on, what? Hold on. I don't know if that changed, but... Uh, stink bug, what's going on? Stink bug? Uh-oh. Oh, I don't like where this is going. Is this the hook? Yeah, it is. Let me steal this coyote. Is this the right order? I hope it is. I think... I don't... Oh... I think it was it was the other way around. Squirrel on the left. Maybe this will do something though. I have not the bones. Fear not the dark, my friend. And let the bones be eaten. Hey, believe it or not, you're not the first to lose an eye here. This isn't much fun if you're half blind. Perhaps you'd like to replace it? Oh, the alien cube. I'll take the alien cube, please. Find salvation in Cuckoo Clock. Regardless, the choice is final. It should only be final for this run, though, right? Since you are a, you're essentially a new person coming here every single run. Okay, let's take a look around the cabin. Can I flip through the book? Yeah. 
I'm going to go through this whole book, I think. Oh, yeah, these are all the tentacle creatures. Uh, their pages are covered in ink. Was that the thing for the... Yeah. <laughs> for the moon. Okay, I think we did a full loop. Oh, we see the right times now. And then there's this. <gasps> we got it out of the painting. Cool. Wonder what that does. Was that say keep sealed? You really did it. I knew I had seen stuff come out of that painting. Bring it here. I I don't know. You saw the mysterious painting. For now. What do you mean for now? Okay. I wonder if this... Oh, I thought that might make time pass or something. I'm going to leave that there. Just for the time being. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, Leshy. Ugh. Good God, buddy. Oh, wait, I was looking at the completely wrong thing. Wrong hands, I think. Whoops. No, I think that's right. Ah, oh, no, that's not, though. <laughs> there it is. Stunted wolf. Before he sees it. Now. Oh, we got a new card. And... <gasps> film! Okay, so we have to beat the, the game while we have the film. Or something. So we can take his picture at the end of the game. After we beat a run. Okay. Am I seeing anything else? Not really. Weren't you supposed to be doing Code Veronica and Metroid Dread tonight? Uh, no, I changed the schedule around a little bit to make things easier on myself. Do we want to keep doing this run? Uh, no, I have to switch over to Doom in a moment, but I am going to pick Ant Queen. We saw what kind of damage the Ant Queen can do. Uh, and there are, we have a cockroach in deck, which means there are ways to go infinite with the ants again. I want to know what's up. Oh, the stoat's different too. What the hell? Is that a tie? That really looks like, uh, like some kind of jacket and tie. Interesting. Okay, we're going to switch over, get ready for Doom Eternal, The Ancient Gods Part 1. Uh, God, Inscription's great. I'll see you in a second. 